It's taken years for us to gain the trust of the artists and also their labels to say, it's okay to talk about these things. Hi, this is Eric Gamm, and this is Billboard News. Welcome to Billboard News. I'm Tetris Kelly, and I get to hang out with my friend Eric Nam today. How's it going? Uh, everything's good. How are you? I cannot complain. Let's talk about this album, House on a Hill. Yeah. It's out now, you co-wrote the entire project. Mm -hmm. So how did that feel to be so involved in the creation of this album? Um, you know, I think I've always been pretty involved in my album, but this one was particularly involved because not only was it the music and the entire songwriting and production process, but it also extended to the music video, the multiple music videos, the short film, the photos, everything. And so, you know, and I think naturally as an ambitious person, I try to elevate and upgrade every album. And so, how do we beat the last one? That was kind of like my biggest homework for this project. But also, you kind of were a bit of a Beyonce with this album, I would say. What do you with mean? Dropping the visuals <laughs> with the album. I feel like she set the, the, the uh -huh. groundwork for you to be great. So tell me how it was to direct music videos with all the songs. That sounds like so much work. Uh, yeah, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, I come from the world of K-pop. When you look at K-pop videos, they're always CGI with things flying in, or in outer space with like fighting imaginary monsters. Like <laughs> it can, you know, there's a lot happening in music videos. I, as a, as a solo artist and as an independent artist, don't have the ability to do that, honestly. And so I was like, but what can I do that would allow me to flex every muscle of my creative mind? I, I thought, why not try to write and script out multiple music videos and then turn it into a short film, so a cohesive piece, I should say, that kind of plays with the themes of, you know, House on Hill, being happy, finding, you know, contentment, being sad, being alone, all those types of emotions. And when you're co-writing an entire album, like, what are the themes? How do you set forth, like, what you're going to explore? It takes a lot of time. I think we spent, like, I was writing for this album on my last tour. The hard part was because all I had experienced for the past few years was pretty much locked down in COVID and then newly going out on tour, I didn't have a lot to kind of draw from um, in terms of thematics, but I wanted to buy a house and I saw this beautiful house on a hill. I ended up not getting it, but in that songwriting session, we started to discuss like, why do we all want a house? Why do we all want to own a house? You know, it's multifaceted. They say it's the best way to accumulate wealth. It's like, is it a status symbol? Is it a sense of identity and purpose and a physical place? And that kind of led us down this spiral of talking about what makes us really happy and what drives us as people. Stay busy. Let's talk about this 80 city tour that you're gonna embark yeah. on here. That's wild. So how is it gonna be different than 2022? Uh, <laughs> well, we're doing, you know, I think last tour we did about 64 shows or so. This tour we're doing about, I think 80, 80 something shows. We start North America. We're doing Latin America as a whole for the first time. We're doing India for the first time. We're doing parts of Europe for the first time. And so just by sheer numbers and the ambitious nature of this tour, it's different. I think, you know, we have new arrangements of old songs and then we also have the brand new ones. And I think for the first time we're doing like some, some stage and set design. Typically it's just been lights, a band, some dancers, but now we're trying to build this world of a home house on a hill. And I will say, I was doing some research about your life, yeah. and I found out something we have in common. What? We were both born in Atlanta. Wait, really? Yeah, following your story. World. Also spent time in Boston, went to business school, and ended up in Seoul on a show. That's yeah. a journey. So tell me, like, how was it for you to go through that, and did you ever feel like you'd end up here? Short answer is no. Uh, I did not think I would end up here. It was a, it was a very roundabout way to get to becoming a singer, but I think it was my only way. I think uh, I was lucky enough to have gone through school, graduated, had a degree, and had a job offer at a strategy consulting firm. What? And that was like the only way my parents were like, okay, like, sure, you can try to do something else for a minute. And um, I just kind of happened to 
land on his TV show. So I am very, very lucky, and uh, it's still kind of surreal to me to think about. And one thing I wanted to ask you about before I let you out of here that was really cool to me was your mental health app mm -hmm. and how you've gotten the K-pop community involved in that. So why did you feel it was important to you kind of, you know, step into the mental health world in this genre specifically? Um, well, I think, you know, mental health is something that every single person on this planet is affected by and with. One thing that I did know is that my time in Korea, um, I had my own struggles and I never found the right outlets or the right resources to really talk about them. and get the help that I felt that I needed. How was it to even get your peers on it? Because like, I'm a carrot, obviously mm -hmm. you've had guys from 17 on there. Yeah. So how was it to get their involvement in this project? You know, it's taken a very long time. I think it's taken years for us to gain the trust of the artists and also their labels to say, it's okay to talk about these things. It's been a challenge, but we're really encouraged by the fact that we have great artists like 17. We have Icon, we have G Idol, we have GOT7, and then even on Western side, we have incredible artists like Summer Walker, Black, Tori Kelly, and even some actors and athletes that I think we are hoping to see very soon. So I think when we have all these artists coming together to really talk about this in their own way, it's been very affirming, but also I think the fans are starting to see how beneficial it is to, to listen to these stories and talk about it. I love the work you're doing. Thank I'm you. excited about your music. Thank and thanks you, thank for you. coming and hanging out with Thank us. you for, for hanging out with me and asking these thoughtful questions, dear Atlanta buddy. <laughs> Atlanta buddy. <laughs>